kids, Miss Kulkarni here. In this video, let's talk about aspirin. Now, aspirin is such a simple medicine and I am sure you have taken this medicine sometime in your life or at least you know somebody who has taken aspirin. So, the history of aspirin goes a long time ago and the natural source of this medicine from which it originated was very simple. Do you know what it is? It is the bark of willow tree. So it is a natural resource. And then we of course decided to extract it and we got the medicine which we're using. But what was the primary use of this folk medicine? It was used as a painkiller of course. Then it was also used as fever reducer and there were times when it was also used for reducing swellings. So all these properties together make aspirin extremely important. Now as I said, we decided to isolate the pure natural compound from the bark of willow tree. And which chemical compound we got out of that? It was salicylic acid. So after we found out that compound, we were able to do more research on aspirin development. Even though this natural medicine was popular, it has some major side effects because it was acid and acidic pH can do some harm. So this natural medicine was causing diarrhea. It was also causing stomach irritation and Sometimes it was even causing internal bleeding. So all these things were kind of serious damaging side effects. Now since the natural source salicylic acid was causing serious side effects, people thought about synthesizing what we know today as aspirin. But for that, they used salicylic acid as the beginning reactant and it was treated with acetic anhydride. So the step one in the process was mixing salicylic acid with acetic anhydride. And of course, it was supposed to be heated in presence of hydrogen ion. Where do we get that from? It was coming from sulfuric acid or phosphoric acid. And then after we heat that for a short time, the next step was to cool it and then dilute with water and then after that you have to make sure that we get crystals of aspirin. Now look at the reaction carefully. We have here OH alcohol group which is converted here to OCOCH3. So what kind of reaction you think we got? That is converting an alcohol to an ester. So in a way we can say the reaction is esterification reaction. Pretty easy, right? Now soon aspirin was getting very popular and therefore scientists were coming with the alternate route for synthesis of aspirin. One of the method which is still popular is using salicylic acid and treating it with ethanol chloride. It's kind of like acid chloride. So what happens over here? That OH group, that hydrogen will be dissociated and then HCl gets removed and directly we end up getting that same ester formation which is nothing but aspirin. Let's study the structure of aspirin to make sure we understand the functional groups present in aspirin. So over here what we got is a carboxylic acid group and of course it attached to an aromatic ring. We got an aromatic ring and also an carboxylic acid. What else we have over here? The group which is represented here is an ester. Now let's see if you are able to detect this with IR spectrum. Alright, here is the IR spectrum for aspirin. Now as it is shown in the figure, aspirin has a carbonyl group at both in the carboxylic acid and also in ester. And we can easily detect that carbonyl group in IR right over here. Then we also got 
O single bond C. So if you get that C single bond O, we can notice that also in IR. And then we have OH group coming from the carboxylic acid that comes over here. We also got CH stretches. So those are seen over here. So in a way we can say yes, the IR is in accordance with the structure of aspirin. Now the question is how aspirin works? What is the mechanism of action for aspirin? And then you have to remember all of that takes place with injured tissue. So the tissue which is injured that will release some chemicals which we call as prostaglandins and these are the one which carry or which give the sensation of pain or swelling or fever etc. So we need to probably stop production of that prostaglandin. What creates actually this prostaglandin? There's an enzyme which is generated. That enzyme is called as cyclooxygenase 2 or we call it as COX-2. So exactly what happens when you take aspirin? Aspirin goes and it binds with cyclooxygenase 2. When that happens, then that will always suppress the process by which the prostaglandins are produced. And then, of course, the transmission of pain impulse to the brain is almost stopped and we don't feel much pain or even fever. Maybe this figure will explain it better. So this is injured tissue and that's going to release prostaglandin. But then there is a cyclooxygenase enzyme which is responsible for production of prostaglandin. So what happens? Here comes aspirin in the picture and aspirin binds with cyclooxygenase. So when that happens, we don't get prostaglandin produced and the further mechanism is completely suppressed. Now in order for aspirin to work effectively, we have to make sure it has the highest bioavailability. We discussed this in the previous video, but the easiest way to make any drug more bioavailable is to convert it into salt form. Now aspirin has a group which is carboxylic acid group. So this hydrogen gets dissociated and we get a carboxylic ion which has negative charge and sodium ion form from sodium hydroxide it goes there and forms a salt. So this salt is quite soluble and that's easily bioavailable. So how useful is aspirin? It's such a simple medicine but it is used for many different reasons. First of all as we discussed it is a pain reliever and the scientific medicinal word for that is analgesic. So aspirin is an analgesic but it is a mild analgesic. Then it also reduces fever and we call that as antipyretic property. The third and very important use of aspirin, actually it's a side effect, is aspirin can prevent blood clotting. So that's called anticoagulant. Many times for heart disorders, the strokes or heart attacks are caused because of sudden clot formation. So aspirin is prescribed in smaller doses for many heart patients and it prevents strokes or heart attacks. Now there are also some harmful side effects for aspirin. And as we know, aspirin can get metabolized to salicylic acid and acid can result into same problems. It can have internal stomach bleeding and if you constantly take aspirin, it may result in still more serious condition causing ulcer and perforation of stomach wall. Also, there is an acid which is generated by aspirin. So guess what? It is going to lower the pH of the blood and the pH of the blood needs to be maintained at certain level. If it goes acidic, that can have some more medical problems. There's also in children, it can call the syndrome, which is a serious condition. This is one more important thing to remember. Alcohol. If it's taken along with aspirin, it can have a serious side effect. We use the word synergistic side effect. That is two medicines or two drugs taken together. Alcohol is also considered as a drug. And alcohol plus aspirin can be dangerous. It actually can lead to extremely serious internal bleeding. 
Now, since aspirin has serious side effects, there are also some other mild analgesics available and people may opt to use those. So, there is one paracetamol and also here is the other one, ibuprofen. Just compare the structures of aspirin, paracetamol and ibuprofen and you do see some similarity. One of the thing is they all have aromatic ring and if you look at the branches attached to the aromatic ring, you see somewhat structural similarity. So I guess you found some useful information about aspirin and I hope you like the video. I'll see you again in next video. Until then, bye-bye.